Now, the Charlie's Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Big Board Friday. Sponsored by Ohio Northern University. The best discoveries come from the unexpected. By the Toledo Clinic. Choose well, feel better. By Subway. Five six inch subs starting at $3. By PT Link Physical Therapy. Feel the difference and get relief now. By Marsha's Homemade Buckeyes. From our kitchen to yours since 1984. And by Frickers, the home for fun, food, sports, and spirits. Now, here's Jordan Strack. Welcome into Charlie's Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Big Board Friday. I am Jordan Strack. We've got 16 games on the show tonight. One big change you're going to notice this year, the rundown on the left side of your screen. You will be able to keep track of every game we've got coming up throughout the night. But first, we start with our game of the week as voted on by you in the WTOL app. It is Springfield against Central Catholic. Both of these teams begin the year with brand new quarterbacks. What an atmosphere at the Gallagher. Great look from our first alert horizon. This one all central from the beginning. Already up 20 to nothing. A huge play here. Bishop Vargas finds Tayshawn Johnson over the middle. He turns it up the sideline and turns on the afterburners. No one going to catch him. 92 yard score. Irish up 27 nothing. Central making plays defensively as well. Darnell Johnson looking to his right. Check out this play by Jacoby Crowell. Tips it to himself. He'll take it down the sideline, spring, inside the Springfield 10-yard line. Later, the dagger from the Irish. Vargas throwing deep down the sideline to Jay Sean rushing. He is there, gets it away from the defender, 62 yards, and the Irish went big, 48-0. The defense, you know, got in a few bad spots. They might have bent a little bit, but they always bounced back and either forced the turnover on downs or forced the turnover or held up strong, which that's, you know, back to in some, in young defense with some inexperience really stepped up in some key situations. The nerves coming to this, I was pretty nervous, not going to lie, but um, I thought I played pretty good. I was Coach Linky, our quarterback coach, he prepared me for every look I'd see tonight, so nothing really caught me off guard. You know, without looking at the film, uh, pretty happy. He made some big play, extended some plays with his legs and made some things happen. Uh, you know, brought, brought some explosiveness to the offense. So, you know, hopefully we can keep building on that. And that's just repetition. This is a great non-league matchup. Anthony Wayne traveling to Finley, Finley student section. Hyped for their home opener. Trojans leading 7-0 at halftime. Fourth quarter now. General's ball, 12 to play. Anthony Wayne going for it on fourth and six. Mason Alberts rolls right, finds Kyle Ray. He gets the first down. Same drive, Alberts this time with the keeper. Avoids a sack, he reaves past the tackle. He is in for the touchdown, it's 7-7. Later, another fourth down attempt. Anthony Wayne play action, defense would bite on the fake. That leaves Ray open on the edge. He gets the first down inside the 15. Then 45 seconds left, first and goal. Another QB keeper for Alberts. He is in for the go-ahead score. Generals win late, 14-7, and John Monk has more. Jordan, leading up to tonight, Finley and Anthony Wayne had only played each other four times in school history, and the record of that series was completely lopsided with 4-0 for Finley. Coming into the night, Anthony Wayne was not only trying to beat Finley for the first time, but was trying to continue that momentum of last year's perfect 10-0 regular season. First three quarters, Anthony Wayne had a lot of possession time, a lot of yardage, but they just could not score off of their offensive possessions. And in the fourth quarter, it took two fourth down conversions versions on each of their scoring drives to finally punch the ball in and to end up beating Finley 14 to 7. In the second half we came out, we got talked to in the locker room and it was just get to the next play, drive and score and that's what we did and our team executed very well. For our kids to fight like that at the end is just, we told them at the beginning of the game you're going to fall back on your training when it, when it comes down to it and our kids fell back to all the work we did this summer. Next week Anthony Wayne takes on St. John's and Finley travels up 75 to visit Perrysburg. Reporting from Finley, I'm John Monk, WTOL 11. Thanks, John. Another NLL versus track matchup here, Bowling Green and St. John's. Revenge Tour t-shirts for the Titans students as St. John's takes on the Bobcats. Second half, BG down by three scores, but quarterback Eli Brown fakes everyone out here. Perfect bootleg. He runs it in for the score, narrowing the gap for the Titans just too much. Get it out to Thomas Zeros. He breaks a few tackles, and he would run into his own man and keeps on going. St. John's goes on to beat BG 42 to 21 to start the season. St. Francis making the trip east to take on Clyde. Knights looking for that opening night upset. Clyde starting off in the first quarter. A little ground and pound offense. Ends in a goal line touchdown from the quarterback Ryan Lozier. Flyers had the early lead. 
but St. Francis striking right back, and they're gonna come through the air. Denim Truss connects on a deep ball with his senior receiver, Todd Bumpus. The Cincinnati commit would walk into the end zone from there. A huge opening night victory for St. Francis, 25-23. Staying out east, Tiffin Columbian making the trip over to Fremont Ross. The Tornadoes came ready to spoil the home opener for the Little Giants. Tiffin Columbian went into the locker room at halftime, leading by a touchdown, and they came out ready to do more damage. Nick Kerper drops back, immediately knows he wants LJ Reeves near the sideline. Reeves able to bring it down with the one. Tiffin would punch it in on the next play. Kerper again feeling it in the third quarter here. This time connects with Gunther Kissel for the go-ahead touchdown. Tiffin Columbian too much for Fremont Ross. They win it 35-7. Woodward, a very tough test to start the year at Perrysburg. Yellow Jackets, a ton of injuries a year ago, but looking really good this year. First quarter, Drew Sims, he's one of those guys back from an injury. Hands it off to Caleb Gherkin. This is going to be a great duo this season. Gherkin finds a hole and he's into the end zone. He had five first half touchdowns. Then Woodward with it here. Their quarterback, Dominic Chismar, scrambling, but Jack Higgins would knock it loose. Jackets would recover Chismar. that kind of night. Dominating night for Perrysburg. They win it 53-0. A year ago, Wade pulled off a big set upset over Northview. Wildcats looking for re revenge on the beautiful new turf field at Mollenkopf Stadium. First drive of the game for Northview, Trent Sims. Forced out of the pocket, showing off that athleticism. He would take this into Wade territory and lead to a Wildcat field goal. Later, Wade getting tricky on the punt. Nick Heslett throwing one deep. Northview not fooled though. There's Sims. He's going to go to BGSU to play and that's why. Northview opens up the year with a 22-6 victory. Next up, Southview and Rogers. They've also got a new turf field over at Rogers. Now every single City League team has a turf surface. Defensive battle early, Javon Hudspeth under pressure, sacked by Zach Harshman and Mohamed Salama of the Cougar defense. Later, second quarter, Southview quarterback Nate Taylor. He would scramble, he gets sacked by the senior Orlando Middleton. Not much working for either team in this game. It was actually 0-0 till late. Rodgers would score and Rodgers gets the win at 7-0 on opening night. A couple teams looking for big turnarounds this year. Clay and Maumee, the Panthers have a new coach this year. That's Cam Kucher, a Maumee man through and through. Clay up 35-0 to start the second half and on fourth down, Eagles Gonna score again. Logan Heinschel keeps it, takes it all the way to the house, but Maumee hanging in this thing, not giving up, trying to mount a comeback. Next possession, Zach Marvin looking for Blake Schneider. A great catch here. Panthers get on the board, but play just way too much tonight. 49-7, the final. It's time for our first Frickers cam of the year. We've got Christy Kopanis out in Maumee tonight. Tough night for the Panthers, but she joins us now with more. It was a tough night, but we're still having fun for our first Frickers cam of the season. We're here at Mommy, and I'm joined by head coach Cam Kucher. Head coaching is not new to you, but football is. What was it like transitioning from baseball to football? Uh, it was, it's been smooth. The kids have been doing a great job working hard and uh, really just uh, kind of came right into a great situation. I knew a lot of the kids, so it's been great, and it was a special night for us. Well, what was it like to watch your kids never give up? Even when the score kind of got away from them, they still were fighting each play. Yeah, we're really proud of them as a coaching staff. I know that that's what we've been preaching, just uh, continue to work, continue to work through the process and, uh, you know, work wins and process changes the scoreboard. What do you say to them from this, this game to kind of move on to next game? I think just continue to tell them that we need to execute better. Uh, we'll watch film, we'll learn from it, and uh, fail forward, really. That's all, all you can do. There's always next week. Absolutely. Coach, thank you so much. We also have the Mall Me Band here and I'm gonna let them take it away. All right, Christy, thanks, and thanks to the Mall Me Panthers. We are just getting started. Up next, we've got the defending champs from the NWOAL, Patrick Henry. They are at late tonight. We've got that and more. Coming up next on Charlie's Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Big Board Friday.
Welcome back. All right, thanks to the Lake Flyers. Welcome back into Charlie's Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Big Board Friday. One change for this year, you got to download the WTOL News app for our live scoring on Friday nights. We're still the only place you can get live scoring for high school football. You just got to download the free app. All right, our pack of pickup promotion brought to you by Charlie's Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram is back this year. Tonight we were out at Lake Flyers fans. You brought over 1,200 pounds of food to the Seagate Food Bank. Remember, the school that donates the most at the end of the year will win $500 cash. Next week we are out at St. Francis. As for the game, the defending NWOAL champs, Patrick Henry taking on Lake. PH the league favorites again this year. Patriots wasting no time getting on the board. TJ Rami, the play fake going deep for Colton Holloway. He holds, holds it in for a huge gain. And then a couple yeah, plays good. later, Will Morrow from a few yards out punches it in for six. They lead nine to nothing. And then on the next possession, TJ Rami this time doing the work on his feet goes right up the middle for the score. Patrick Henry dominates the lead, 30 to nothing. A couple great programs meeting up here Ottawa Glandorf and Eastwood. Titans working on offense, Jacob Balba. Passing here, he would find it. Jerry Beach. He would be off to the races. No one going to catch him. Down the sideline, he finds his way into the end zone for the score. Later, Fallbaugh passing again. This time, rifles into the end zone for Clayton Wrecker, who comes down with it for six. But it was Eastwood that would come back and get the win, 21 to 14. Genoa opening their season at home with Bishop yeah. Reddy out of Columbus. Comet fans ready for this one. Genoa looking for the big play here. They would get it. Ryland Stoner would launch it deep to Robert Messenger. Wide open in the end zone for the score. That would be their lone points on the night, though. Bishop Reddy just too much in this one. Connect on a deep touchdown pass here. Genoa falls in week one, 24 to 7. All right, we're taking another break, but we've got more to get to. It was a historic night out in Rossford. The Bulldogs playing their first game at the new stadium. We've got coverage from that straight ahead on Charlie's Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Big Board Friday.
All right, welcome back into Charlie's Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Big Board Friday. It was a historic night out in Rossford, the community coming out in full force to support the Bulldogs in their fully renovated stadium. A really cool night. This one, Bulldogs versus Bulldogs. Swanton in town to take on Rossford on that brand new turf field. Rossford threatening in the red zone. Kyle, Kyle Kromenecker, the pass fake and rifles a pass up the middle to Dylan Prater. He hauls it in, puts him up 21-7. Second half now, Kromenecker back up the middle. Again, this time to Lucas Klotz, who comes up just short of the score, but they would cap it off a few plays later. Kromenecker again to Klotz. They extend their lead to 28-7 and go on to win it. On the new turf, 34-14. Gibsonburg went 9-1 a year ago. Golden Bears in town opening the season with the Green Bears of Ottawa Hills. Opening drive of the season for Gibsonburg ends in six. Handed off to Theo Hernandez. He scampers 11 yards for the touchdown and a quick lead for the Golden Bears. But Ottawa Hills would answer right back. Matthew McGee, the play fake. He finds the freshman, A.J. George. That's the son of Toledo defensive coordinator Brian George. Wide open for the touchdown, but Gibsonburg just too much. They win it 38-14. Liberty Benton coming off an uncharacteristic four and six season. Eagles <laughs> opening cool. their season at home with Bucyrus Winford. And how about the LB seniors? You can donate $20 to the academic fund and get a reserved parking spot all year. They can paint it as well. Second quarter, Winford in the red zone. Dustin Brady drops back, gets the pass just off, gets before he gets tackled. Falls in for the two point conversion, it's eight nothing. But the Eagles answer right back next position. Michael Erdlack. Screen pass to Marshall Rose. No one going to stop him. That's a 42-yard touchdown pass. LB wins it 34-29. Bedford kicking things off at home with a tough test against Sterling Heights Stevenson. First game of the Mike Vickers era over at Bedford. And they got off to a great start. Early on, headed off to the senior. Christian Brown pounds his way off some tackles, takes it to the house. Kicking Mules had the early 7-0 lead. But Stevenson just too tough tonight. Jordan Kwiatkowski takes this right up the middle, untouched to the house for the score. Stevenson scores 32 unanswered. Bedford falls 32-7. All right, coming up tomorrow, Toledo opens their season on the road at Kentucky. Ohio State is home with Florida Atlantic. Michigan will be at home a night game against Middle Tennessee State. Notre Dame will play on Monday night. That is going to do it for us tonight. Thank you so much for watching. This is Charlie's Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Big Board Friday.
We start this morning with our game of the week is voted on by you in the WTOL app. We've got Springfield against Central Catholic to kick off the high school football season. Both these teams beginning the year with brand new quarterbacks and what an atmosphere it was at the Gallagher. Great look there from our first alert horizon. This one all central from the beginning. Irish already up 20 to nothing. Huge play here. Bishop Vargas finds Tayshawn Johnson over the middle. He turns up the sideline and turns on the afterburners. No one going to catch him. 92 yard score. Irish up 27 nothing. Central making plays defensively as well. Darnell Thomas looking to his right. Check out the play by Jacoby Crowell. Tips it to himself. He's going to take it down inside the Springfield 10 yard line. And then later this was the dagger. Vargas throwing deep down the sideline for Jay Shun rushing. He is there and he's getting away from the defender. 62 yard score. Irish win it big 48 nothing. The defense, you know, got in a few bad spots. They might have been a little bit, but they always bounced back and either forced the turnover on downs or forced the turnover or held up strong, which that's, you know, heck, the, the, the young defense with some inexperience really stepped up in some key situations. The nerves coming to this, I was pretty nervous, not going to lie, but um, I thought I played pretty good. I was Coach Linky, our quarterback coach, he prepared me for every look I'd see tonight. So nothing really caught me off guard. You know, without looking at the film, I'm pretty happy. He made some big play, extended some plays with his legs and made some things happen. Uh, you know, brought, brought some explosiveness to the offense. So, you know, hopefully we can keep building on that. And that's just repetition. This is a great non-league matchup. Anthony Wayne traveling down to Finley. Finley student section hype for the home opener. Trojans up 7-0 at halftime. Fourth quarter now. Generals ball, 12 to play. Anthony Wayne going to go for it on fourth and six. Mason Alberts finds Kyle Ray. He's got the first down. Same drive. Alberts, the keeper this time, avoids a sack. Weaves past the tackle. He is in for the touchdown. It's seven all. Later, another fourth down attempt. Anthony Wayne here, the play fake. The defense would bite. Leaves Ray open on the edge. Gets the first down. He's down inside the 15. Then with 45 seconds left, it's first and goal. Another quarterback keeper for Alberts. He is in for the go-ahead score. Anthony Wayne wins it 14-7. Another NLL versus track matchup here. Bowling Green against St. John's. Revenge Tour t-shirts for the Titans student section as St. John's takes on the Bobcats. Second half, BG down three scores, but Eli Brown here faking out everyone. Perfect bootleg, runs it in for the score to narrow the gap. But the Titans were just too much tonight. They get it out to town of zeros here. Breaks a few tackles. Runs into his own man, but he keeps on going. St. John's goes on to beat BG 42-21. St. Francis making the trip east to take on <laughs> Clyde. Knights looking for the opening night upset. Clyde starting off first quarter, and they were going to ground and pound this thing. Get it down inside the goal line. Touchdown for quarterback Ryan Lozier. Got to wait for the signal. Yeah, it's good. Flyers had an early lead. St. Francis, though, striking right back through the air. Denham Trust connecting on a deep ball with his senior receiver, Todd Bumpus. The Cincinnati commit walks into the end zone from there. St. Francis, a huge opening night victory, 25-23. Staying out east, Tiffin Columbia making the trip over to Fremont Ross. The, the Tornadoes came in ready to spoil the home opener for the Little Giants. Columbia went to the locker room at halftime, leading by a touchdown, came out ready to do more damage. Kurt, Nick Kerper dropping back. Finds LJ Reeves near the sideline. Reeves able to bring it down at the one. Tiffin would punch it in on the next play. Kerper then later feeling it. Third quarter, this time connects with Gunther Kissel for the go-ahead touchdown. Tiffin Columbia, too much for Fremont Ross. They went 35 to seven. Woodward, a very tough test to start the year at Kingsburg. The Yellow Jackets, a ton of injuries a year ago, but they look really good this year. First quarter, Drew Sims handing it off to Caleb Gherkin. They're gonna be a great duo this season. Gherkin would find the hole, he plows his way into the end zone, get five first half touchdowns. Then Woodward with it here. Quarterback Dominic Chismar scrambling, Jack Higgins knocks it loose. Jackets would recover a dominating night for Perryford. They win it 53 to nothing. A year ago, Wade pulled off a big set big upset over Northview. Wildcats looking for revenge on the beautiful new turf field at Mollenkopf Stadium. First drive of the game for Northview. Trent Sims forced out of the pocket. Shows off the athleticism. Takes it down into Wake territory that would eventually lead to a Wildcat field goal. Later, Wake getting tricky on the punt. Nick Heslett throwing one deep. Northview not fooled though. Sims is there to pick it off. Northview opens the year with a 22-6 victory. Next up, Southview and Rogers. They've got turf field at Rogers. Now every single City League team has a turf surface and it looks awesome. Defensive battle early. Javon Hudspeth 
under pressure. He is sacked by Zach Harshman and Mohamed Salah of the Cougar defense. And then later, Southeast quarterback Nathan Taylor scrambling. He gets sacked by the senior Orlando Middleton. This thing a defensive struggle all night long. Rodgers would score the only touchdown of the game. They would go on to win it seven to nothing. Couple teams here looking for big turnarounds. Clay and Maumee. Panthers have a new coach this year. That is Cam Kucher, a Maumee man through and through. Clay up 35-0 to start the second half. On fourth down, the Eagles only need two yards. They get way more than that. Logan Heintro keeps it and takes it all the way to the house but for the touchdown. But Maumee hanging in there. They didn't want to give up. Showing some fight. Next possession, Zach Marvin going to the corner of the end zone, finds Blake Snyder. Great catch. Panthers would get on the board, but Clay just too much. They win it 49-7. All right, a great start to the high, high school football season. Excuse me. That is it for sports. We'll see you back here tonight.